Imagine this, you're working peacefully, the phone is charging near you, and suddenly you smell something smoky. One glance is enough to notice the white smoke coming out of your iPhone. This is real, and it happens every day. These people have been injured by their iPhones that caught on fire. If you don't want to go through the same fate, you need to change the way you charge your phone. One mistake can cost you new phone or even life. Most people pay zero to no attention to how they charge their new expensive iPhones. They make a lot of mistakes and their charging routines, the first one being neglecting the predictability of charging. iPhone batteries use lithium-ion technology. Apple states that this type of battery provides the best performance for your device, weighs less, lasts longer, and charges more efficiently. However, despite all the advantages, lithium-ion batteries are far from perfect. The chemistry inside them doesn't go well with randomized charging. Playing games or doing power-intensive tasks while charging puts unnecessary strain on the battery. Most people play games or watch videos while charging without knowing that each time they do it, the battery is dying fast. The temperature is rising, the chemicals inside start acting weird and unpredictably, the battery management system experiences difficulties with managing the power, all that improper, irregular regular charging is a huge battery degradation factor. Your phone is either charging or discharging. If you want to play games, wait for the iPhone to charge, plug out the charger, and then start playing. Then turn off the game, plug in the charger after the battery gets low. That's the correct way, which will not damage the precious battery. It's also important to understand how the battery in an iPhone works. All rechargeable batteries have a limited number of charge cycles and may eventually need to be serviced. A cycle means a full battery battery discharge from 100% to zero. This means that if you are using only 20% of battery charge a day for five days and charge your iPhone daily, at the end of those five days, you will go through one cycle. And it's important to clarify two things. Overnight charging isn't bad and there is no need to keep your battery charged constantly somewhere around 50%. Modern phones are very smart about charging and if you leave your phone plugged in overnight, it will not allow any damage to the battery. However, if you decide to leave it charged overnight without being plugged in and then recharge it in the morning, it can cause faster battery degradation. As for the 50% rule, that's overkill these days. Old batteries were more fragile, but modern ones can be used any way you want. Just try not going crazy on charging and recharging. Plus, if you suddenly notice that you've started charging your device more frequently, it might be time for a new battery. Use your phone with care and the battery will last a long time. How you can check the battery health? The easy way is open in the settings, battery, battery health. Here you will see the maximum capacity of your battery. If it's over 80%, you're good. Below that, better visit the service center. If you want more detailed information about the battery, you will need to do some mumbo jumbo. Your iPhone continuously checks every component for failures and stores the information in special data logs. If you are using an iPhone on iOS 15, these logs can be found in privacy and security, analytics, and improvements. Now open the analytics data option, you will see a log long list of log files. To check the latest one, open the last log file with the file name prefix log aggregated. Then look for battery count cycle. However, if you have updated your iPhone to iOS 16, checking your cycle count gets less straightforward. To do it, you need to download a shortcut which will do everything for you. I'll put a link in the description. So after you've downloaded the shortcut, it will appear in your shortcuts app, but you can't use it straight away. First, you need to tap on this three dots icon and scroll down down to design capacity. You need to enter the exact battery capacity of your iPhone. This data can be found simply by Googling. Next, open the analytics data option and look for the most recent file named analytics. Click on the share icon in the top right corner and choose our shortcut. After a few seconds of processing, the result will appear on the screen. To mitigate some negative effects of your charging schedule, turn on the optimized battery charging in settings. If that toggle is turned off, the iPhone will charge to 100% anytime you plug it in. The optimized battery charging setting helps slow the rate of your battery's aging by reducing the time it spends fully charged. This setting uses machine learning to understand your daily charging routine, then waits to finish charging past 80% until you need it. For 
example, if you are charging your phone at night, the iPhone will charge up to 80% quickly and charge the remaining 20% at a slower rate right before you wake up. Additionally, I recommend installing software updates with some updates Apple tweaks the system's behavior, optimizes its power consumption, etc. Installing the latest iOS on your iPhone means providing it with the newest and greatest instructions on how to manage the charge, battery drain, standoff usage, etc. And the latest instructions mean the best performance. While talking about making sure your battery works okay, it is important to pay attention to your cybersecurity. The internet can be a very dangerous place, so having a strong set of passwords is crucial. And there is no better app for password management than NordPass. This tool was specifically created to safely store your passwords in one place and to secure your connections to online spaces like stores, social media, and others. These places can present a substantial threat to your personal data and in case of data leakage lead to financial or reputational losses. With NordPass, you can not only store passwords in a secure encrypted way, all passwords are end-to-end -end encrypted, even NordPass staff can't access your login details. Plus, if you have trouble coming up with different passwords for different websites, NordPass enables quick generation of safe and strong passwords. NordPass stores all your passwords in the cloud to make sure you don't lose them, even if your phone or laptop breaks. Additional features include data breach scanner and password health, which allow eliminating security liabilities before any damage is done. Plus, you can import your passwords to NordPass, which makes the transition painless. The NordPass application itself is protected by multi-factor authentication, master password, and biometric authentication. This way, browsing the web on any device will be trouble-free. So if you're feeling that passwords are your weak spot, try out the NordPass. By clicking the link in the description and entering the code AutoWiner, you will get a free month's free trial with all the features. Make your internet browsing secure with NordPass. Another mistake people make is charging their iPhones in hot or cold environments. According to Apple, the iPhone's operating temperature range is 32 degrees to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 degrees to 35 degrees Celsius. Apple also provides a non-operating temperature range, which is broader, of minus 4 degrees to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Batteries above everything else are extremely responsive to temperature changes. Have you noticed that during winters your phone holds charge worse? This happens because the chemical reactions inside the lithium-ion batteries get less active, which means less current is produced. Charging your iPhone in cold environments does revive some of those chemicals, but does it not in a very good way. You should be extremely cautious if your phone has been sitting and freezing for a prolonged period of time. If your phone's temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius, even one charging attempt can degrade battery health dramatically or destroy the battery altogether. Hot environments are also harmful to your battery. When the battery is hot, the chemical reactions intensify and may spiral out of control. If you charge your phone when it's hot, you put so much strain on the battery that it may swell after a few such charges. To avoid that, you must take precautions. For example, don't sleep on a device, power adapter or wireless charger, or place them under a blanket, pillow, or your body when it's connected to a power source. Keep your iPhone, the power adapter, and any wireless charger in a well-ventilated area when in use or charging. But the biggest mistake people make is using third-party chargers and cables. iPhones have tons of battery charge management systems in them, and those systems need to communicate with the charging brick. During charging, the iPhone and the power brick are constantly exchanging data, comparing readings, and adjusting the charging process accordingly. Original Apple chargers as well as MFI certified have very capable surge protection which diminishes the risk of damaging the battery. That's why Apple recommends using the original power adapters or MFI certified. Quote from Apple's website, you can charge an iPhone with made for iPhone or other third-party cables and power adapters that are compliant with international and regional safety standards. Other adapters may not meet applicable safety standards and charging with such adapters could pose a risk of death or injury. Please don't use unoriginal power adapters for charging. Go to Apple's website and see which chargers Apple is selling on their website. It is much better to invest in a good charger once than pay for new iPhone batteries over and over again. As for the charging cable, I bet you didn't know that a cable can kill your battery. Damaged or low quality cables can cause fire, electric shocks, or even catch on fire. I have personally seen a cable that has melted during charging. That is a frightening experience
experience to see such cables because you know that they may catch fire at any moment. Don't do that, use original or Apple certified cables, saving on buying cheap ones, just just isn't worth it. If you want to prevent your iPhone battery from dying fast, you can charge it wirelessly, but always use the original charging pad or Apple certified one. I know that wireless charging is less effective than charging via cable, but it is much safer. All wireless chargers have a very sensible power limitation, which allows maintaining great battery health even after many chargers. For example, my friend has bought a used iPhone 13, which after a full year of charging wirelessly via MagSafe, had its battery at 100% health. Wireless charging is a battery savior. Combine the low power of wireless pads with intelligent charging algorithms and you will get an almost undying battery. Surely even this approach isn't perfect, but it's much better than charging via cable. So let's conclude everything with a set of rules. If you want your iPhone battery to last long, you must. Use only original or certified cables, power adapters, wireless charging pads. Turn on optimized battery charging and install software updates avoid doing anything power intensive on your iPhone while charging, and avoid prolonged exposure to high and low temperatures. If you adhere to these simple rules, your battery will serve you well. You will be safe and protected from any dangers of exploding batteries. And have you ever had batteries exploding on you? How is the battery health on your iPhone? And what are your tricks to preserve it? Type your answers in the comments down below and hit that like button if this video was helpful. Subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our new videos and see See you in the next one.